Hello and welcome back to HairSport.e, Ireland's only media platform dedicated solely to women in sport. My name is Alana Canan. Uh, this is Her Sport TV, and today we're joined by Steeple Chaser and Olympian Michelle Fenn. Welcome, Michelle, and thanks for joining us today. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> so your Instagram said it all in that you needed a rest after the two fastest steeple chases of your life in the same week. Uh, what did that feel like to take, you know, nine seconds off your PB and go within one second of Roshi McGadigan's record? record? Um, it was good. It was really <laughs> good. I think I've been like training really well for a good few years now. And like I was probably should have ran a PB, like a better PB last year. So like the nine seconds looked bigger than what it felt like to me. But like it was just really good or even just getting under the 930 was kind of the main time goal for qualifying so that was almost a bigger deal than the pbs I think. <laughs> definitely and in quotes afterwards just touching on what you were saying there you know you said before that you often felt let's say disappointed going over to talk to the media and that you felt you could have done better and probably were doing so in training uh, how did it feel to be on the other side of that and kind of being ecstatic to go over and talk about it i suppose <laughs> Um, yeah, well, it was good for a change anyway, because I think <laughs> you, even if you're disappointed, you can't just like you can't just be disappointed all the time. Like you just yeah. have to put it. So it was nice to not have to like pretend and find the positive quotes and like the learning from the experience and all the generic <laughs> day after the bad run. So it was nice to just actually be like really happy after a race. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, taking it back um, for a second. Uh, interested in athletics and a Cork native is it a stupid question to ask who were your heroes growing up <laughs> I suppose the obvious one is Sonia anyway the one everybody yeah. wanted when um, we were in school and stuff um, so yeah probably Sonia yeah and really um, anyone like I just probably I don't even watch that much sports but like I'd watch a bit of any sport and just I feel like I can appreciate a lot of like pretty good athletes as much as the like real greats I think yeah, definitely. And um, four years then in uh, Kentucky University on scholarship. Uh, what did what did you study out there? Oh, um, that was a kind of complicated <laughs> thing. <laughs> I did two years in UL before I went to America. So then I went to America and I did like, well, I was going to do nutrition and dietetics, but I just had to transfer just with the NCAA rules about staying eligible and stuff. So I did an yeah. undergrad in interdisciplinary studies and health and I did a master's in organizational communications and then I just came back and finished the PE teaching in Irish in UL. Yeah I just thought I'd ask because I know you're saying it was a complicated one everywhere I was looking I was like I'm not quite sure what went on there but no that's really interesting. Uh, you've been to the Olympics before in 2016 and um, what was that experience like and uh, what have you learned from it that you could possibly bring into this one? Um, well it was great like obviously it was the Olympics so like it's what you're trying it's I feel like in athletics it's kind of like the main goal is to qualify for the Olympics and be at the Olympics so like obviously it was like really cool to do that and to be there but I think the last time I, I think the steeplechase was a little bit easier to qualify for a last time round so I'm happy that I qualified this time because the event has definitely moved on so it's kind of nice to have moved on with the event but like last time like I, I think I was a bit disappointed with my performance the last time mm -hmm. but realistically like I wasn't actually going to like I might have ran a few seconds faster but I wasn't going to do anything amazing anyway so I was really just like happy to be there and had a great time and enjoyed like all of it and it was just like just really cool to be there but hopefully we'll do a bit better this time around. And just as you're saying off to the Tokyo Olympics now um, in what's been the strangest of years how, how much are you looking forward to showing what you can do out there? Um, I'm really looking forward to it I think like when it was postponed last year I was just so disappointed because I was like really ready for like the 2020 yeah. Olympics and like I had just put a lot into the 2020 Olympics but like I think it did favor a lot of Irish athletes to have an extra year and like even though I was in a good position last year I think it actually has kind of clicked for me more this year um, yeah would you would you say like, you're at your peak now this time around as opposed to let's say for the sake of argument it had been this time last year yeah, well, I like I did think this time last year that I had that kind of time in me, but like I didn't do it last year. So like whether that was because of lack of racing opportunities or it just was hard or just because mm -hmm. everything was postponed and changed and stuff. But like at the end of the day, I didn't run under 930 last year and I did this year. So like I'm not saying I couldn't have done it last year. I still kind of think that I could have and should have, but like I didn't. So like I would say, yeah, I'm definitely like I've done it now. So I'm in a better position now than I was last year. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks like it's all coming up at uh, Millhouse. So there's a history of Olympians in your family, I believe, with your dad's first cousin, uh, Sonny O'Gorman, competing in the 1948 marathon. Are you planning on making your own piece of history this summer? Um, what, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what, what, would, what would your own expectations be um, for this Olympics, let's say? Um... Oh, that's kind of is that, to... is that giving too much away? <laughs> <laughs> I just I'm gonna just try and run as hard as I can. Like 9:30 any other year, I think would have made the final, but I just think the event has moved on this year. So like to make the final, I'll, I'll definitely have to run a PB. And like I think it's a lot. Like I don't I don't think it's unachievable, but I think like it will be hard to do. So like obviously mm. that's probably that's the main goal. But like it will be hard to do. But other than that, just like run as well as I can, as hard as I can, as fast as I can, and just feel like I've like done my best and and enjoyed it I suppose so afterwards yeah. after that uh, is that even something after the Olympics is that even something you're thinking about just yet or would you say you're going to take time to regroup and kind of assess what's going to happen or what's next for Michelle Finn um, yeah I'm kind of just gonna I'm just focused on the Olympics for now and I'll see you after that but um I don't yeah I'll see you after the Olympics I think just get there first and do as well as I can and then just reassess my whole life after that <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect and I think that might be a good place to wrap up thanks a million for joining us today Michelle um, I've been Lana and this has been hersport.ie uh, be sure to drop us a like uh, a share and a follow to stay up to date with all the latest action <laughs>